the skills gap will never close. So what do we do in that reality? We have to think about it differently. Digital transformation is simply human transformation. I predicted in March 2020 that the coronavirus would be the biggest catalyst to business transformation in history. McKinsey says that in the first 60 days, we leapt forward five years in our transformation to digital. So this is a massive accelerant to our transformation to digital. We're just starting to scratch the surface of what humans can do. So I say we need to shift from humans being a cost to contain to an asset to develop. If you look at what we're doing today, it's like we're driving a car and we're looking in the rear view mirror. But technology has sped up that car. So we're not in first gear anymore, we're in fourth. And the pandemic put it in seventh. But we're still looking behind us. Heather McGowan is my go-to person for the future of work. There are a lot of mirages out there, but Heather is the oasis. Uh, she's the real deal. What makes her unique is her ability to convey her ideas through both words and visuals. And the combination of the two are really powerful. Tech skills depreciate. Social skills appreciate. We're not acting like that. If we're going to have to learn and adapt for life, we have to connect to that motivational driver. And I think that fuel source is purpose. When your company's business model changes, you need to change with it or ahead of it. So you have to understand how your organization creates value, what their business model is, and how your work directly contributes to that value creation. That's a big shift for a lot of us. The impact for reskilling is the ability to respond to the known. The impact in investing in human capital more broadly is the ability to explore the unknown. And so much of the work we're going to be doing in the future is the unknown. The top 10 populations in the world used to be countries. And only two of them are countries. The rest are social media platforms, and that happened in the last five years. These digital flows are reshaping our world. Flows of information, flows of knowledge, it's also flows of community. In the past, we learned once in order to work. Now we must work in order to learn continuously. It's about adaptability. Your products and services are just exhaust from your learning. Not that long ago, we all lived in the same town. We were born, lived, and died there. Now we spend half of our time and mental energy somewhere other than where we physically are. So where are you from becomes a really interesting question. It used to be the only thing you did was survive. The good news is we're a highly adaptive species. We're more than capable of this. It looked like this. Education, career, retire. You went to school in the first third of your life, got on the career ladder, you collected a pension, and by design, you died a year later. You were successful there if they codified and transferred the right skills into you to get you your first job and get you off on that ladder. Now it looks more like this. Life expectancy is not 90, but it will be soon. Education becomes learning. Career becomes leverage of that learning. And retirement really becomes a reality of longevity. We never saved for or planned for a 30-year retirement. I've relied on Heather McGowan to assemble, synthesize, demystify very complex information and it always provides a path to value-creating action. She's smart and she's real. What do you want to be when you grow up? An absurd question when 100% of jobs are going to change. This number is probably wrong. Now I've heard it's a third. It doesn't matter. 57% of statistics are made up. A lot of the jobs don't exist yet. And those that do, half the work within them is going to be automated. So why limit somebody's potential by making them imagine a future self and then work towards it? Gone are the days you can say, I have no idea how my company creates value, this is my little job. No, now you need to understand how your company creates value and how you connect to that value creation, what your own business model is. So we're calcifying somebody's mindset and identity around an expression of skills and knowledge at a moment in time, and I think that's dangerous. We keep lunging at skills, like if you just learn coding, or if you just learn this, you'll be robot proof. We have to think about reskilling, like updating software on our phones. It's just going to be a way of life. We're going to be doing it continuously. We've got to invest more broadly in human capital. There's no one skill you need to have that's more important than the will to acquire multiple skills. If 
I handed you guys a phone without an address book in it, how many people could you call? You're already part cyborg. <laughs> You've outsourced that part of your brain. So when they talk about us merging with technology, we're already doing it. How do we navigate in this world? Learning is the new pension. Always be learning. It's how you make your future value every day. So I say if we can adapt to the speed of change and who work, what they do, where they do it, and how they do it, I don't what else we could do. There's nothing humans can't do when you look at what we can do when we work together. So this gives me a tremendous amount of hope. We can do anything. Thank you very much.